episode of Streaming Turtlings. Oh, that's not right. Uh, Steaming Dumplings. Right. No, no. Uh, Surf and Turflings. No, no, no. God. What? Uh, creepy Halflings. Right. No, no. Leaping Lem... Bings. Uh, cut it, cut it. Spicy Turtwigs. No, God. <laughs> I'm a spicy turtle. Why? Why can I do this? I'm a flea bit peanut monkey. All my friends are junkies. That's not really true. I'm a cold Italian pizza. I can use a lemon squeezer. What do you do? I'm just now from a food. Everybody's right in this town. Have you made? But I'm just a monkey man. I'm glad you are a monkey woman too. Oh, I like that one, do we? That is a bit of an homage to that strange hummus bean we met last episode, I believe. Right? Sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah, you know, I I can't control what comes out of me, but you're right. It's, it's a bit reminiscent of that silly scientist uh, who thought that all creatures, get this, uh, evolved from the same ancestors. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'd have to kill myself if that were true. I I couldn't live with myself if i if i was somehow related to these ooh, to these hummus beans Horrible. oh i know i know i'd help you i'd help you kill yourself if that were true oh well they, well that would be true for <laughs> you too gory so i don't know why you'd be <clears throat> helping me to kill myself when you'd be wanting to kill yourself too right unless unless you're keen on murdering your superior officer this sounds a bit like treason no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not, Captain. Of course not. I was just, I was just agreeing with you on the silliness of the thought that we might be related to these Lurfian subcreatures. Oh well, all, all right then. Yes, I mean, maybe all the creatures on on this Podunk planet are evolved from the same primordial goo, as it were. But, uh, they, you know. they probably are. They, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still holding out hope. I'm, I'm rooting for life on Lurf. I really am. But so far, the hummus beans that we've met are either a bit daft or accident-prone, or they're overly needy. Hold on. Hold that thought, Gory. I'm, I'm getting some squawking on our communicators. Yuri, or Gory, uh, can you hear me? And right on cue. I, I sure wouldn't mind the comforts of one of your space toilets, uh, not to mention a space shower, as I... Still have all this sand uh, on the inside of my clothes, and it's quite uncomfortable. Is, is there any way you can shrink us down again, bring us aboard your ship? It's it's cold out here at night, and I, I think I hear a coyote. Uh, oh, that's um, definitely ho, 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 hold on, CC. Let, let me check with the crew here on what's possible. Please, <clears throat> please tell me we can't bring him aboard here. We... We still haven't repaired Space Toilet 3 since since its last visit. It's a mess. Well, uh, the last time we brought them aboard, we utilized programmed black hole travel, which is always a bit risky. And it would obviously require a black hole. I'm not sure if Hank has any of those on him. Ah, good, 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 good. He probably doesn't have any of those with him. Um, CC, we'd, we'd love to have you back on board here, but... We're, we're all dying to see you on the ship. Is that the Levian expression? Dying to... Anyway, how, how nonsensical that is. We, why would you say you are dying to do something when, if you died, you would you most certainly wouldn't get to do it? Did, well, I think did, it means you want something so bad it's practically killing you. Like when you, like when you Captain, uh, when you first met the Noodle Queen and, and she was only occasionally responding to your love embroideries... Uh, sort of stringing you along, as it were. Uh, you were dying to see her, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for the explanation, Gori. I 
I imagine you were just dying to work my ex-wife into the conversation. And now you'll be dying soon. If I don't... Oh, Captain, holster that proton blaster. You know it's against me Porpian protocol to fire at a subordinate. What? Yes, typically they aren't worth the ammunition. But anyway, CC, getting, getting back to your request, uh, the thing is to, to bring you aboard the ship, your friend... Hank would have to have one of those uh, black holes in a box, and even if he did have one, it's it's quite risky. Oh, swell, swell! Thanks, Yuri. Let me see if Hank has one of those. Hey, Hank, wake up! Ooh, uh, what, 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 what happened? What, what, what? We're still in the desert, Hank, and uh, yours what? truly has to go real bad. So, do you ho- happen to have one of those black hole jobbers on you? What, what, what? What do you need with a black hole, huh? So, so we can go back aboard the little alien ship and use one of their space toilets. Oh, oh find a bush, Audrey. Oh, I, I do know that reference, Dennis. It, it's a great flick, but it's not helping me at this time. Oh, Cece, I, I still can't see anything. My, my, my eyes, how, how, how bad do they look? Oh, Hank, you're so vain. Uh, But if you need a second opinion, sure, I'll take a gander. Uh, Well, your eyebrows are gone, uh, so right away that's a bit freaky. Say, say, didn't you lose your eyebrows back during our tent fire when our our roadside store burnt down? Well, well, I I sure did. They uh, they just about grown back, too. Now they're gone again. That's crazy how this keeps happening to you. But yeah, there's just two ashy smudges where your eyebrows used to be, and... And then your eyes, well, they look fine, aside from not seeming to focus on me when I'm standing right in front of you. What? Hot, hot cheese and potatoes. Are, are you blind, Hank? Well, 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 that's what I've been trying to tell you. I, I can't see anything. Wait, wait. Have you always been blind? Well, well no, of, of course not. You know that. I'm not blind. Don't be so sure, Hank. That CC has a hard time seeing beyond his own halo. I resemble that remark, Dennis. Now, now, Hank, try to focus. Uh, oh, sorry, bad choice of words. Uh, no. Here, here, see if you have any. Oh, I, I did it again. Uh, keep making okay. references to your sight, even though I'm aware that I shouldn't. I don't know what's happening. You're pathologically insensitive is what's happening. Yeah. I know, I know, I'm trying. Hank, can you check uh, check your person there and see? And, oh, I did and check if you have any of those black holes in a box. Why, you know, CZ, I haven't been blind long enough to be offended by your sight-centric language. Oh, good, good, because I gotta say, it's hard to adjust how you speak at the drop of a hat. Yeah, it's, it's harder for some than for others. That's what she said. Now, now, Hank, uh, how about them black holes? Uh, I really gotta take a whiz. Well, uh, I'm sorry, CZ, I'd... I didn't bring any black holes with me. Now, hold on a second, CC. Are you making all this fuss just because you got to take a tinkle? For the love of cream corn, just go anywhere out there. Well, now, Dennis, now look who's being insensitive. There's not a bush or a bit of cover as far as the eye can see out here. It's just just deserts. And I'm I happen to suffer, if you must know, from a moderate case of pararesis. Uh, paro, paro what? Commonly referred to as shy bladder syndrome. Oh. I'm a shy bladder. Okay, there, I said it. Now, now everyone knows, even our little alien friends. I'm so embarrassed. I may never pee again. I'm not sure that's a real thing, CC, you know? It's just like you you to encounter someone with a, a bona fide disability and then have to come up with one of your own to keep it all about you. No, no, guys, I swear I'm my favorite saw. It's the real thing. You can check with that walking encyclopedia, Shipward, there. Shipward, can you hear me? Oh, goodness, what are they squabbling about now? Shipward, can, Shipward, can you please settle this, this ridiculous argument for them? Uh, 
<laughs> sure, Captain. Uh, scanning my memory banks. Uh, yes, it it looks like uh, a being with uh, paroesis uh, finds it difficult to or impossible to expel waste fluids when other beings are around. Uh, Pararesis is believed to be a common type of social phobia, ranking second only to the fear of public speaking. Pararesis is often first experienced at school. Well, it's funny you should say that, Shipward. And thank you, by the way, for validating my disability. I heard him say it's a phobia, CC, not a disability. Well, I find it quite disabling, Dennis. But getting back to my story, I did first experience this debilitating phobia at school. We don't need to hear this. It was recess, maybe second or third grade, about a year before my pa made me drop out to take care of the pigeons. Me and some other boys found a dead squirrel in the corner of the playground underneath the big oak tree. The poor little guy's ticker must have given out when he was scared by a hawk or something. Or maybe the missus had had enough of his daytime dalliances with the chipmunks down the trunk. Oh, Lord, CC, can you just get on with it? You're, you're right, Dennis. How the squirrel died is not germane to the story. Suffice it to say, it's dead on the ground in front of us. And Mickey LaFontaine, the, sort of the co-leader of our little pack, along with yours truly, decides right then and there that we're forming a club. And to be in this club, you have to whip it out and pee on the dead squirrel. Now, I, I don't know about, I didn't know about my shy bladder before this point in my young life. I guess I never had it put to the test, but immediately I had a sense that this could pose a problem for me. So being quick on my feet, I right away started making a case against the idea based on the principles of hygiene and public health, saying it may be, it might be possible for whatever diseases that dead squirrel harbored to travel right upstream, as it were, and into our bodies, right into our Johnson's. Do you want a sick dick? I remember asking my friends. <laughs> I tried to hone in on Marvin, who was the most tentative soul among us. He he had a pet bird. He once took a solo in the school chorus, singing very high notes in front of the whole school. So I, I tried to get him on my side, but to my horror, I saw he was already peeing on the squirrel. Mickey locked eyes with me. We had been competing for leadership of this little gang for quite some time. He knew he had me as he took his turn wetting the deceased rodent all without breaking our staring contest. Uh, okay, CZ. I think we've heard enough. I believe you. I couldn't ever face those boys again. I was ostracized at lunchtime, persecuted throughout the playground, basically driven out of school, all thanks to pararesis. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a sad story, CZ. Makes, makes me glad I've just lost my sight. Well, well look here. I can't see anything, and Dennis will cover his eyes if you want to, to wander over there and just, uh, I don't know, do, do your business, as it were. What about our little alien friends? Oh, well, they're still figuring out how to use the windows on their ship. I th I think you're good there. Fine, fine. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yuri uh, and Gurry, back to you, and no peeking, please. Oh, my comments. I can't believe our hummus bean friends have monopolized this much of the start of the episode when I haven't even haven't even welcomed our listeners to what is, what is this, the one, two, three, uh, eighth, eighth episode of season two. I am your host, of course, Captain Yurishi Blackowitz. Oh, no. Uh, Where'd this guy come from? My shop ladder is going to explode. What are what? you talking about? Oh, hello, sir. Where'd you come from? All oh, uh, right, right, trolley. Good to see some other intelligent, uh, at least semi-intelligent life. Well, yes, uh, I recognize you from the rescue scene at the well. I was in the crowd when you and those little meepopians were saving the boy. Uh, then I saw you all fall into that parallel well they were digging. What? Why? Do do I hear my, my old friend, Ro Roxy? Roxy, is that you? Hello, Roxy. Oh, you'll you'll need to turn on the ship's loudspeaker, Captain. Oh, here here oh, you go. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Ro Ro Roxy, Roxy, is that you? Uh, this is Yuri. Yuri, yes, yes. I came looking for you. Everyone else left, and they started boarding off the tops of the wells. But I slipped by them before the last board was in place. 
and I scaled down the walls and then found the hole you dug to try to escape. And I traveled through it, expecting to come up back near the top of the well, but instead there's nothing here but desert. What in the Tiberian quasars is going on here? Ah, well, my friend, I'm, I'm afraid we've traveled through what appears to be a wormhole and into a, a parallel universe, or a, or a parallel universe, as my chipper chimp of a second in command has dubbed it. Hey, who are you calling chipper? And apparently in this version of Lurf, the, the quote-unquote smart machines and that, that, that the hummus beans began developing joined together in revolt and quickly overthrew their only intelligent enough to be dangerous creators, not needing food or sustenance, the surface of Lurf... Or the Lurfist. Uh, yes, 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 all the Lurfists quickly became a barren, a barren wasteland. Also thanks to irreversible global warming, which the hummus bean set off and had no means to reverse. Terrible. Oh dear, dear, dear. A rather unfortunate turn of events for the species. If only one of them could have seen this coming. Yes. One of them did. He made a boring <sighs> movie about it, uh, ran for president, lost by a hanging bit of paper or something. Ah, isn't that always the way? The truth sayer isn't in the right position of authority, or the timing isn't right, or something is off about three of his tentacles and one of his misshapen heads, and no one takes him seriously. Why are we talking about you all of the sudden, Gory? What? That, was, that wasn't that was about me. Uh, Captain, uh, I'm picking up something on one of the scanners, which I've managed to get operational while you all have been talking uh, mostly nonsensically. What? Ah, good, good, good work, Shipwood. What is it? Well, it's a machine that uses a combination of short and long wave particle beams to detect heat, movement, and objects in our surroundings. What? It, no, not, not what is a scanner. I, what, what are you picking up on the scanner? Oh, sorry. So well, you... not to alarm you, but it has all the signatures of a Gorgon warship. Gorgon warship? Oh, man the soup cannons! Oh, wait, they're, they're non-operational. Where's Manuel? Where's Manuel Overdrive? Override, Manuel. Go, go, go! Wake up, Manuel. My eye, Captain. What? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, Captain, I'm not sensing any trigger locks or armed weaponry. It seems to be approaching in peace. In peace? Ah, oh, well, I, I knew that. Still, <clears throat> to be safe, I'm going to retreat to the to the war room for just, just a moment. Do you mean your secret lavatory? Well, I'll be. Look at that coming out of the sky. Oh, hell no. I was just about to pee. Oh, what is it, Dennis? Can you, you and maybe describe it to me? I, I can't it's a, like a giant flying cheese wedge, but dark gray, not the color of cheese, and not the texture of cheese. Looks quite strong and formidable. Well, thanks for painting me a picture, Dennis. That's... Oh, well, that's no wedge of cheese. Uh, well, not literally, anyway. That's that's my brother's ship. Cammy has somehow found me here. That's your brother? Ca Captain, did you hear that? Ship Shipward, is the ship's loudspeaker on? Uh, no, it's off now. Oh, good, good. Captain, come out of the space toilet and listen. This is important. I'm in the war room. I keep well, up. well, I hope it's war you're planning for in there. That Gorgon ship belongs to your friend Roxy's brother. Ro what? Yes. Are you? And, and don't you see what that means? I, I, I do. I, of course I do. I, you don't. I, right? No, no, I don't. What What am I missing? Oh, it, it, it means Roxy is a Gorgon. He's got that regal tone. He mentioned someone killed his father and you promised to find his father's killer. Yes. Oh, my comments. I've spelled everything out. He's he's Lord Roquefort. Roxy, Roquefort. And his brother, who he just called Cammy, is Lord Camembert. We killed his father, Gorgonzola. Oh! Uh. 
Are you sure? Are you really sure? <laughs> yes, I'm. How are you not putting this together? Bah! Oh, my word. How could we have been so blind? Oh, sorry, Hank. No. no. Uh, but but to be but to be fair, um, you killed Gorgonzola, Gory. So, what? All we have to do is we, yes, we hand you over to them. Ask them to let bygones be bygones. No, you, you, have to, you wouldn't. You wouldn't uh, do such a thing. If I may interject. In the little time we have before one of us all uh, gets us all killed, we are about to encounter Lord Camembert from another dimension in a parallel universe. What happened back in our universe should be unknown to this uh, Camembert. Ah, Shipwood's right. Right. We have no idea what's going on in this universe. Lurf is completely different. Maybe the Maybe the universe is too. Maybe hardly seems like reason enough for me to leave the war room. I, I think we better pause for a word from, yeah, from one of our sponsors so I can collect my, my thoughts in here. I, I'll work up the courage to come out after the commercial break and face this, this different camel bear. How, how's that? Oh, fine. I, gu I guess we need to pay the bills. Yes. Good plan. American Cipriatoli, my American friends, oh, what used to be America before the big desert took over. Are you feeling lost, not found? Are you feeling thirsty after crossing endless stretch of endless stretch after endless stretch of sand? Well, that only stands to reason. That's not an indication of anything special, but uh, are you feeling empty on the inside? And in a way that's not related to the two days you've gone without food or water? Well, then, uh, 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 you know, Isa, what are we doing here? Hey, what's that, Sultan? Eh? What is this that we are doing? Trying to find people or help help people find themselves again? Some, something about this doesn't feel right. Uh, how does it feel right uh, all of a sudden? This is uh, something we do for many, many years now. Uh, we help a lot of nice girls and nice boys. We save them from becoming the adults if we can. Huh? Well, right? Well, that does sound admirable when you put it that way. We have all seen what adults have done to the world, but still I can't shake this sudden feeling that this is not what we were meant to do, finding people... For some reason, I think we should be losing people. Unwanted children, perhaps. It's just a feeling I have, uh, suddenly. Uh, are you sure it wasn't the uh, extra spicy chili dog you just ate? Yeah. Uh, no. With the uh, extra onions and some uh, pickles, uh, Chicago style, so yeah. No, no, Issa, it's not my stomach. And uh, the strawberry shake you had, uh, you had to wash it down. No, no, you lo you know me. I love the shakes. Oh, yes, the two mile run you went on immediately afterward. Oh, oh, oh Isa, hold the phone. I must yes. race to the toilet. Oh, cover the commercial for me. Cover what? It. But Zoltan, I uh, I don't know where you are going with this, and I don't have uh, don't have the script. What what am I uh, supposed to say? Huh? Just stop for time. I believe in you, my brother. Uh, okay, Zoltan, I will uh, I will stop uh, the time. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's. At the, at the House of Spiritual Recovery, we help you to reconnect with your inner child with a unique uh, combination of motivational speaking, as in hide and go seeking, and uh, spiritual and uh, physical cleansings. Uh, ah, speaking of which, let me uh, let me introduce a uh, mistress of the house, uh, Rakia. Uh, Rakia? Rakia, where are you? Rakia? Uh, I do not heed your every beck and call, Isa. 
I am strong woman. I bang my own drum. Uh, yes, I, I didn't mean anything by it, my little jaguar. I was uh, just trying to introduce you to our audience. Uh, we are doing a commercial. A commercial? Uh, yes. Now, why you, you don't tell me, you fool? I, I would have done up my hair and, and put on my taller boots. Oh, yes, uh, I like those. <laughs> Where is your idiot brother? Uh, I am right here, my sweet. Uh, just having a bit of a problem after it. You had the chili dog with the works and, and a shake before your afternoon run again. Yes, yes. Ooh. Oh, you men, you are so strong and invincible. You, you refuse to learn. You are quite vincible. You are vinced by a hot dog and a bit of ice cream. You have become soft in this country, boy. Well, uh, we can't all be from the Siberian tundra like you, raised by wolves. It, it was just one wolf that raised me, a she-wolf named Lupitka. Don't make me think of her or I will grow soft too. No, uh, Rakia must be strong. I am wolf. Uh, what is this wolf, Rakia? I thought you were my little Minsk. I am back, uh, feeling mostly better now. Uh, uh, you might want to avoid going in there for maybe three dozen minuti. Oh, Zoltan, you promise not to do <laughs> it. Uh, oi. Such a charmer. Do you need the whole Zoltski? Oh, don't you know it? Uh, maybe on this super ultra power wash setting. And that's all the time we have for this spot, I believe. So come on down to Zoltan and Issa's. And Rakia's? Well, what am I? I, I am a, a half a tuna fish sandwich over here. Ah, you make a good point, my sweet little cute. Uh, so come on down to Zoltan and Issa and Rakia's house of spiritual recovery and rehabilitation. And say you heard us on the Greetings Lurflings podcast, and you will get half off of your time with the hose. Hey, that is the hose spelled H O S E, not the other type of hose. The other type of oh, hose is Isa. Isa, I didn't think we needed to make that distinction. Now you've made it weird. What oh. did you call me? You better run, Isa. You what? run because you know you can't hide from me. I did. I. I. Uh, no, again. No. Run away. Leave me alone. Hey, save some for me. Uh, help me, D. Okay. Okay. Okay, Captain. That. Weird, the weird commercial is over. Uh, it, it was our Russian friends, Zoltan and Isa, who seem to be in the business of helping people find themselves in this dimension, uh, helping people find themselves. And it's, it's so strange. I don't, I don't want to come out. I, I don't think, I don't think I'm coming out there, Gory. I, I'm oh, no, but Captain, definitely staying in here. Captain, come on. I'm deep in the wall. Planning in here, Guri. Right? Yes, yes. I'm planning. I, I, I couldn't possibly explain it to you. It's very, very complicated things. Yes, things that only captains know about. Very confidential part of my training. Something you might learn one day. Should you? It's doubtful. Should you ever reach my, my rank? Ah, dare to dream, Captain. You, you know, the day I aspire to be a captain cowering in a space toilet is the day you can shoot me full in the full on in the cranium with a proton blaster set on nuclear, okay? Nu nuclear? What? What is that, Gory? Our proton blasters don't have that setting. If they did, I would sort of surely try that out on you by now, at least uh, five times. Oh, nothing, nothing. It's a Lurfian expression. Look, look, fine. You've, if you've got your captainly deeds to do in there, I, w I won't interfere. I'll just go face the Gorgons myself. After all, I've already vanquished their daddy. Uh, what threat could two vengeful sons pose? Captain and Guri, uh, I'm getting a ha hailing message from the approaching Gorgon ship. I'll put it on uh, hollow square screen here. <coughs> oh, oh, good. Well, here goes nothing then. Uh, 
Sh Shipwood, can you track down Manuel Manuel Override and in case we need to fire a soup cannon? Greetings, me porpions and warflings alike. I couldn't help but notice a few of you suddenly gone adrift amidst the shifting sands of this resort-like landscape. Resort-like landscape? It's it's a desert. Ah, you see a desert. I see miles and miles of white sand beaches just waiting for an ocean or a Gorgon Insta Oasis, to be precise. But we won't be drilling down to the waterhole table in this sector for some time yet. So in the meantime, I wanted to see if I could offer you and your friends here a, a, a transport to the nearest sign of civilization, which looks to be something called Dallas. Oh, Cammy, Cammy, is that you? I I hardly, hardly recognize you without the thirst for universal domination. Why, Roquefort, my good brother? <coughs> oh, what in the great galaxies are you doing out here? <laughs> doing some more of your interplanetary outreach work here with the poor Lurflings, perhaps? You've got such a big heart, I always admired that about you. C Captain, I think you can come out of the space toilet now. This version of Lord Camembert is not evil. Not evil? Are you... are you sure? It, it could be a trick. It's now, a trick. who out there would ni like some nice, cool watermelon? I always pick these before my desert patrols in case I come across any thirsty wanderers. <laughs> you know, this Lurfian food stuff is 92% water. Look, I've already cut it up into... Bite-sized chunks here. I, I don't think this is a trick, Captain. And he doesn't... He doesn't know you killed his father. You're Th sure about this that, is, part? This is another dimension, a parallel universe, remember? Why, why would this version of Camembert know that? Ah, right. That is that is a good point. One, one you could have made before I locked myself in the war room here. Embarrassing. Wait. Oh, no. I, th I, I think the lock is jammed. I, oh, I can't can seem I... to get out. Help! I'm claustrophobic. Oh, oh! now this here is just the ticket. It hits the spot, this watermelon. Thank you so much. Uh, what did you say your name was? Well, I'm not sure I did. How rude of me. I'm Lord Camembert, son of Gorgonzola, or Benevolent Cheese, as he's known throughout the universe. Well, howdy, your cheesiness. My name's C.C. McGraw, son of Rutherford, Rutherford McGraw, known throughout the high sands region of West Texas as a real son of a bitch. I'm not sure I've yet made his acquaintance. But this watermelon is a lifesaver. I can't thank you enough. If Sheila were here, well, I'd insist that she thank you enough. But since she's not, uh, there's not much more I can offer except... Uh, <laughs> Oh, extreme gratitude. Uh, whoopsie. I, I think I need a napkin. Oh, I packed those too. Here, take what you need. Say, Roquefort, I'm just remembering. Weren't you supposed to be leading the intergalactic charity hyperdrive for lesser beings in the Rom Nebula this weekend? How is it you come to be all the way over here? Mm, uh, yes, yes. Well, I... Well, I took a quick break to scout out some new lesser beings as recipients of the funds this car flew on. We, we might have found some good candidates in these poor lurflings here. Yes, they are a bit hapless, as in without hap. Is that what that means? What is hap? <laughs> you, you've got me there, Cammy, but whatever hap is, the, the beings in this distant planet don't hap it. <laughs> I mean, have it. Well, you know, did, uh, did somebody say there was a watermelon? Oh, now, sorry, Hank. Uh, we seem to have clean forgot about you over there on that rock. Well, oh. <laughs> you know how it is with society's st stigmatization of disability. Why, why, even the word disability is a bit discriminatory, no? Uh, meaning without ability? I mean, you still have plenty of abilities, don't you, Hank? Well, I believe I still have the ability to clock you on. Oh, 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 oh. swinging a miss there, Hank, uh, but oh. point taken. 
Point taken. I'll, I'll, I'll just bring you some watermelon chunks. Here you go. Oh, oh, this is, oh, this is so good. This is quite yeah. good. Uh, you don't have to tell me and when, while you're slurping that up over there. And and by the way of polite dinner conversation, I was I was just thinking how Taylor Dane is one of the best female singers in the light rock genre, wouldn't you say? Well, what's that now? Ta Taylor who? Taylor Dane, you know, tell it to my heart. Uh, I mean, this is one this is one area where I have to agree with my pops, who was wrong about a lot of things. But as he used to say, Taylor Dane is pound for pound one of the top female vocalists well, that 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 is ridiculous no no i mean it i'm not sure how you can deny that taylor dane is pound for pound what does that even best... mean pound for pound we're not talking about boxers here oh but she's a boxer in the musical ring though i mean just think of her list of hits prove your love i've always uh i'll always love you uh I could go on and on. Uh, I could go on and on. I don't I don't remember that one. No, no, no. I was Hank. I was saying I could continue to list her hits if if I you, you can list all the hits you want. They don't hold a candle to the Sarah McLaughlin song Possession in my mind. That song alone is a knockout punch for your little boxer Taylor Dane. No, you take that back. You can't knock down my tailor. She's pound for pound. Uh, no, pound now, back. gentle beings. I'm sure we can resolve this a little dispute peacefully. I, I happen to be familiar with the musical canon of this particular outpost. Uh, did, did, did he say canon, Gory? I knew this was a trick. No, get no, the soup can. No, quiet down, Yuri. Yeah, they're, they're talking about all of this, our space toilet productions. I, I never knew they could inspire such debate. It seems to me the two of you are uh, making sort of an, as you would say, an apples to oranges comparison. Taylor Dane and Sarah McLaughlin being from slightly different time periods and uh, different musical genres. Oh, that, that, this is true, I have to say. Well, well okay, Cheese Lord. Uh, who do you think rivals Taylor Dane in her time period, in her genre? That's what I was trying to say. I'm not sure you can think of anyone. Well, what even... about Amy Mann? Uh, the, that voice's carry song is, oh, well, let's just say it carried from one end of the Gorgon, Benelevant Empire, to the other. Okay, okay, he's got me there. Amy Mann is pound for pound. Just, well, just a little goddess, I'd say. Uh, I, I take back everything I said about Taylor Day. Oh, I, I can't even utter her name in the same sentence as Amy Mann. Lord Cheese. We will follow your lead. Heed your every command. Just tell us which way to go to get back to our version of Earth, please. Uh, what's that? Uh, is this not your home planet? What do you mean? Well, we think we traveled through a wormhole to get here from a parallel universe is what we were talking about. A parallel universe, I think you mean. Uh, yeah, yes, that can happen. The important thing is not to panic. Well, it's a little late for that, your cheesiness. You see, I suffer from periuresis, uh, which is a long story, but um, uh, my bladder has most likely already ruptured inside my body, causing unknown amounts of disease and filth. Oh, say, say no more. As in, please say no more about your ruptured bladder. I, I may have, I may be an imperial overlord, but I do not have a strong stomach when it comes to medical emergencies. Ah, uh, you must not be a fan of Grey's Anatomy then. Well, no, I'm not, but not because of the gore. There's just too much drama. I mean, how much can happen to one hospital's ER crew? Well, yeah, it's it's so unbelievable. It's just not believable. Am I right? But, but getting back to the matter at hand, it, it is important that, that you get back to your version of the universe. For the longer you stay here, the higher the risk of running into your acquaintances, or, or yourselves even, and creating a disruptive event that could collapse all of the universes upon themselves. Would that be bad? 
Well, I think that happened on Grey's Anatomy once. Did I see it in uh, the second is season? a bit of an understatement, my friend. Uh, everything my good father and my brothers and I have worked to establish, a universe flourishing in peace and understanding, would be gone. Um, um, Lord Camembert, if I may, this is, this is Gurry aboard the Star Runner here. Ah, yes, and that's quite a nice ship. A bit of an upgrade from your standard Meporpian craft. Not that your beings' crafts don't have their own functionality and charm. Oh, you don't have to be nice. It makes a Meporpian craft look like a floating hydrachia turd. Well, <laughs> yes, I wasn't going to say that, but... <laughs> anyway, this much nicer ship of ours is in need of some repair. You, you wouldn't happen to have a mechanical crew at your disposal that you could lend us or... or... Or a wrench, perhaps. Uh, did someone say wrench? You see, you see, you see, I told you there was a demand for more than just drills and saws. We could offer all sorts of tools under one roof instead of specializing in just one. Oh, not this again. You're crazy. Jack of all trades, master of none. It's better to know one thing and to know it well. Well, yes, I'll dispatch them a, a repair box right away, but I, I must insist on your going back through the wormhole from which you came as soon as their work is done. We cannot risk any encounters with... Uh, wait a minute, Rokra, did you come through the wormhole with them? Is that how you happen to be here? Uh, no, 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 I told you, I was... Scouting out some potential beneficiaries of the large charity event that uh, that that you mentioned, the hyperdrive. Yes, yes, yes. The hyperdrive in the the in in the Rom in the, Nebula. Yes, yes. Right, right. I must be getting back there. Uh, Where is your ship? Oh, it's right over there, uh, over that rise uh, behind that sand dune. Funny, my sensors weren't picking up any. Other uh, Gorgon craft. Well, well, it's, uh, uh, it's got one of those new cloaking devices. It's quite innovative, actually. I'll, I'll have to tell you about it sometime, but I, I, I really must be going. Okay, well, uh, safe travels, my brother, and uh, I'll pass along my love to father for you. Uh, yes, uh, you do that, please. And I uh, must now continue on my patrol and uh, replenish my supply of watermelon, I see. Oh, but it was good, and we are much obliged, Cordon Bleu. Uh, it's Camembert. Cordon Bleu is a, is a distant cousin of mine. Oh, I'm not sure your repair bots are done with our ship, Camembert. Oh, oh that's okay. They're, they are programmed to return to wherever I am. Best of luck in your own universe. Uh, say hello to me if you see me there. <laughs> oh, oh, we will. We will be sure to say hello. Is he gone? Is is he gone? I I believe so. He's just yes. He's just zoomed off in his craft. I believe. Oh, maybe those repair bots of his can unjam this lock. It's getting a bit, a bit closet phobic in here. I uh, I think it's claustrophobic, Captain. No, no, it's the fear of being stuck in a closet, I, I think. And hence, closet phobic. It's just scary. Whatever it is, it's scary. Well, whatever it is, I think you'll have to fight through it and wrap up the episode from in there. Oh, Count Parasink. Well, I, I see I don't have a choice. So, until next time, this is your fearless, <clears throat> fearless captain saying... Oh, boy, uh, I should not have had so much watermelon. What well, with my internally ballooning bladder situation, I could barely move, Dennis. You're going to have to carry me back through the wormhole. Ever so gently, please. I can't believe we have to go back. That's if I can even get the drill machine running again and get in, get to go in reverse. I know. Then we... And then won't we just be back in the bottom of the of the of that whale, uh, that parallel? Yeah, yes, but at least we'll be back in our own universe. It's too dangerous to stay here. We've we've already dodged a soup cannon blast with Roquefort seeing his brother Camembert, and Camembert not figuring out it was Roquefort from a parallel universe. 
Yes, Roxy, that was quick thinking on your part. Very, very quick thinking. Mm, yes, yes, I, uh, I can't quite get over how how benevolent my brother is here. And apparently my father, still still alive in this version of the universe, is some sort of kindly ruler. Yes, benevolent cheese, Camembert said he was called. Well, we'll have to ruminate on what this all means between now and the next episode, or or during the next episode, as I can't ever seem to remember what happens in between episodes. It's almost it's almost as if we cease to exist outside outside of these podcasts. That that couldn't be true, could it? Are we are we but fictional characters in some mere play performed? For the entertainment of the unwashed masses? No. Oh, Captain, how, how, do, no. you, how do you know they're unwashed? Uh, well, there's been a pandemic for over a year. What, what does anyone have to be clean for? You don't go anywhere. Uh, that's a good point. Yes, so anyway, stay, stay tuned for the next episode of Greetings, Lurflings, when we try to go back to our own universe and back to the bottom of a parallel, I guess, and, ah, but with our ship fixed up by Camembert's repair bots, perhaps we can, perhaps we can just fly right out. Oh, we that. could, oh, but the top's been boarded up of the well, the top. Oh, okay, Gory, wait, I think we'll figure it out. I'm trying to wrap up this episode and not get into solving our problems of the next one just yet. Ah. Got a whole week to figure that out. Sorry. Just hope those wormholes work in reverse and take us back to the correct universe. You don't suppose we could go to a yet a oh, worse? Yes, yes, really, anything could happen. Great. And with the writers we have, anything that can happen usually does. There's no time or seasoning to any of it. Time or seasoning? Yes, time with a T-H. It's one of those... Right, right, I get that. But I think the expression... It. Oh, never mind. Let's just get out of this segment for... And this... Ridiculousness. Oh no. Oh no, not this segment again. I'm still getting over our encounter with that with that monkey lover, Charles Darwin. Which which segment is it? Oh yes, we get to interview famous hummus beans again. Yes, well, you know, Captain, if you're not up for it, uh, I could just go. Uh, we could save some time crystals that way. Yes, it's quite a waste of our precious time crystals. Although, wait a minute. Do you not want me to go with you? What? No, 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 it's not that. It's it's just... Uh... Do, do I embarrass you? Are, are we interviewing some hummus beans that you fancy to be really cool, as, <laughs> they, no. as they say here on Earth? Are, and you don't, want, you don't want to be seen with me, is that, is that it? No, no Captain, it's just that if we're interviewing two hummus beans this time, which they do happen to be cool, uh, uh, if there's two of us, then, well, then that's four characters, and there's only three voice actors here in the studio, as you know. Gory, we made it this far into an episode without breaking the fourth wall. Now you've done it again. <sighs> Reset the counter. Reset the counter. It's now, it's now once again been zero days since the fourth wall. It's been shattered by Gory here in the podcast studio. Thank you, Gory. Well, right, right. But so you understand? Good, good, good. I'll, I'll be on my way now, and uh, you'll have to hit the button over there to make that time ta time capsule sound effect. It's, it goes some what, what, something what, like what button? one of these buttons. Oh. oh, I'll see you, Captain. Uh, It'll be fun. I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Oh, well, that was humiliating. <laughs> well, we've traveled through time, Captain. You're not supposed to still be talking to me. Let's oh, try that again. Right. Maybe that. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Okay. Oh, okay. It's quiet now. I think to. Yes. It looks like I'm in a different time, and I'm going to be. Yes. You're all in for a treat, folks. We are going to be interviewing the famous, very famous hummus beans, maybe the two most famous in the area of rock and roll. I don't know what the end is for. Mick Jagger 
from the Ro Rolling Stones and Paul McCartney from the Beatles. Yeah, hello. What? Who? Well, who is this? I, I don't recognize either of you, so you're going to have to... It, yeah, one of you is Sir, it looks like. Sir Paul McCartney. Oh, that would be me. Oh. Skibbity doop up. Why, sir? Why do I need to call you sir and not the other one? Well, I guess I'm a bit cool as all. Keep it because he's a bloody wanker. <laughs> he's a he's a bit of a uh, what a cover band, isn't he? What a cover band? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they say. Why don't you oh, go? Yeah. Uh, why don't you go sail on your yellow submarine? Well, I do have uh, quite a few of them actually. It's uh, got a billion dollars. I have. How yeah. much money have you got? I got enough. <laughs> Plus, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, I, Paul, are you two not friends? I are you? Uh, are you? Oh. Are you hanging oh. about with the royals right now, Sir Paul? You call that rock and roll? Oh, I think it's pretty cool to be a knight, don't you? A knight? Is it night and day? From before you were a knight and Oh, no, a knight with a K. Oh, a knight and a... day from when he was a, a real rocker till now he's a, a, a bloody wanker hanging with the posh folk. Oh, I'm not, not a wanker, but I am 80 years old. <laughs> Quite an old 76, man. 76, what's that got to do with it? Is 80 years oh. old. Is that actually old on this planet? Because I'm 80 million years, uh, Earth years old. Well, 81 was old enough for Charlie. That's uh, quite a bit uh, old. Unfortunately. Yeah. Who's Charlie? Was that one of the... Charlie was my different. drummer. Well, he, he yeah. got mad when I called him my drummer once. He punched me right in the... Right, in the, right hard in the, the old kisser, but... <laughs> now he's a bit oh. dead, I see. <laughs> not very good now, is well, he? That's not very nice, sir. Sir. Oh, well. Funny. Sorry about that. I just don't care. I've gotten so old. I could pretty much do anything I want. But I am a nice guy. Is that I'm why you did that documentary? It was rubbish. Yeah, I thought it was quite charming. Who's the, who was the mate? It was the Grizzly Adams you were with there? Uh, Dan Haggerty? What was yeah, it called? 321 Contact? Yes, it's a, basically a PBS, PBS special about electricity and such. <laughs> I've got the Bloodhound gang. They're going to show up, but uh, they didn't want to. They said it was a bit of rubbish. I think everything you've done for them, so 72 is rubbish. <laughs> what? Oh, I think everything you've done from well, 1949 is a bit rubbish, don't you think? <laughs> That's the <a> bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Exile okay. on Main Street was better than anything. I can't get you satisfaction. Wait, what? Okay, break it up, you two. Jeez, I really would, maybe I could. I you thought... sing a bunch of granny songs, just like your friend Johnny told you. Oh, ooh, that's a bit low. How you do you think? sleep at night? <laughs> oh, quite, quite well actually. I've got this uh, it's pillow. It's got extra down, but it uses. Uh, Vegan feathers, they're not from any real bird, they're from a genetically modified pillow. You take a pillow, genetically modified, and clone it into a new pillow. What? It's great. I don't get it. He's, one of, run out. He's one yeah. of these vegan uh, poffs. Oh, yeah. Why? Did you run out of real birds? Uh, no, I don't want to destroy anything that's a, it's an animal. I've got a farm. And uh, why not? Well, lots of little animals on it. I do. Oh, I don't think it's fair. Well, what, what, speaking, you... of, speaking of pillows, do you what was golden oh, what slumbers you? about when you wet yourself too much? <laughs> no, that was golden showers, that was the original working title of it. But uh, well, is... well, we thought golden slumbers was a bit sleepier. I was yeah. a bit tired, sleepy indeed. I fell asleep halfway through that medley. <laughs> Quick. Oh, I feel. I fell fast asleep when I uh, oh watched your show the other day. Of course, I had earplugs in because it was too loud. Yeah, because you're <laughs> old. You're too old for rock and roll. It's only rock I'm and too roll, old but for I like it. <laughs> well, I haven't had as much plastic surgery as you have, have I? I ain't had plastic surgery. You look like a uh, 90 year old moose. <laughs> I didn't know what that means, Lootie Doo Bop Bop Boop Boop. 
Which which one of you came in through the bathroom window? Was that one of your songs? Uh, that was me, yes. Uh, I really had to go pee. But I have this uh, condition, it's called paralysis, <laughs> and uh, oh. I couldn't pee in front of anyone. It was really a bit embarrassing. So now he ends up came in the through golden... the bathroom window, and uh, you know, I had my golden showers, and uh, that's what... So what's the song's about, really? Too many golden slumbers. If you really think about it, most of my songs actually are about my paralysis. Really all about me trying to pee when I'm 64. When actually, I'm 64. they're working tight. Yeah, that's the one. scooby doo bop boop boop doo boop doo What was it like playing with Keith Moon, both of you? Uh, oh. you can't, can't keep a steady beat, I tell you that. He died in my house. He did. Keith Moon. Quite did. sad. It, was he not yes. in your bands? No, we had Ringo Starr. He was a he's oh. Oh, the best drummer of all time. He is next I'm to sorry. Charlie Watts. Oh goodness! What? What? Okay, Charlie Watts. Follow up question: What was it like not playing with Keith Moon? Were you jealous of the Who for having such a Who energetic drummer? Jealous of the Who? They never. They, uh, they're they're most famous for CSI episodes. What they in CSI? I haven't seen that show. Oh yeah, they, yeah, with the with the with the scream and all the the puns. The who really? What? I, I, what were you talking about? Something I, I didn't, didn't watch on my travels to to Lurf. Who are you, you and all that rubbish on the uh, on the cop shows on America? Ah. Oh. It's not even it's boring. Who cares? You live in America, don't you? We've all moved to New York. We've got an apartment there. I moved there. I bit the big apple. Don't mind the maggots. <laughs> don't you Speak even know my songs? I'm referencing them. <laughs> Speaking of Actually, I don't really listen to your bands, really. <laughs> You're not quite good. <laughs> Sounds a bit like a wonky uh Cover blues band, doesn't it? Cover oh blues. yes, isn't it true that you recently called him a blues cover band? Is it is is that true, Paul? Why would you say so? Well, first of all, what is blues and what is cover, and what but is band? I, I what can are, answer that. The blues are, is something the Rolling Stones can play, and that the <laughs> Beatles can't play for shite. All right, they played you know fake Chuck Berry. And we played the real blues. We played with Muddy Waters at the Checkerboard Lounge. Oh, so this is a good thing, the blues. Of course I'm it blue is, that we you're wrote so our own bad. music. And we didn't just play blues. We, we even did a disco song. Anyway. I don't know if I'd be bragging about that, I would. <laughs> I, disco I is wouldn't quite be bad. I wouldn't be bragging about the girl is mine. So, you know... Or what about that? What is the bear? And yours is Michael Jackson. Oh, Michael Jackson, he, uh, he, he still owns all the rights to me <laughs> songs, he does. What about that? I don't really like him. Not a fan. Not a fan at all. The girl. If I weren't a vegetarian, I'd eat him. <laughs> what about that Christmas song? That was pretty, pretty painful, Paul. It was, it was pretty. I actually, I played that song as a, because I lost a bet, really. I didn't want to do a Christmas song. Oh, Not at all. Worst. It's on every year. They still play it. I know. Makes me want to kill myself, it does. It's terrible. So you lost But a I figured if I'm going to make a Christmas song, I better make it really bad. And Paul McCartney, I figured they'd play it all the time. So why not just write a really bad song as a practical joke? I did. And now it's it's, it's really come to... Come to haunt me, it has. It's terrible. It's not, Scooby -Doo not so funny anymore, I guess, but well, I right. don't think it ever was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. You were but here's a, I have a bunch of questions to get to here, folks. Uh, if you you were both in bands, right? But then there was another well, band was. called the <laughs> There's another band called The Band. Did that ever get confusing? Yes. When you were trying to get into a club, let's say, and you would tell the guard at the door, I'm in the band, did they ever say, did they ever say, you're not Robbie Robertson? You're no, not because Rick I Tango. never said that. Oh. I would say I'm with the Beatles. I would. 
Uh, I would actually use the name of my band, and, and they would probably know a bit confusing those, for them. They would know who the Beatles were. Of course, with the Bleeding Beatles. Of course, they did. Right, right. That Beatlemania Same and all that rubbish. Who uh, said it? Well, at least people Bloody still know who we are. Bloody Beatlemania's bitten the dust, is what the Clash said. I asked my grandson what, what if he knew who the Rolling Stones were. He's like, oh, I don't read that magazine, Dad, Granddad. I don't read it. I was like, oh, it's not. It's not just a magazine. It's actually the name of a band. Just a, right. a really bad blues cover band. You're you're daft, is what you are. Why don't you go? Is that one of your songs? Sing some more silly love songs. Oh, I've got to admit, that's quite a bad song. <laughs> but very silly. I did say in the title it's a bit silly. All right, the bass line was good, but otherwise, I'll give you that. As I was traveling out here, wasn't there some video, Paul, where you play every character in the. I think it's you and your wife at the time, and you're every character in the video. Wasn't that every one of his videos? <laughs> hey, you take that back. You do. Oh, it was very. It was a very was strange band. song, or maybe it was a, performing on a TV show or something. It was very strange. And he, Paul McCartney was every person in the band, and his wife was every other person in the band. It was just very strange. Was, is that popular? Is that what people do on this planet? Well, we try to keep it interesting. We do, you know, but it wasn't they interesting. Want to do the same thing. It was the same person over and over again. Oh, well, that's what's made it interesting. Oh. It's like it's like doobie every doobie. song over and over again from the you know, seventy-eight to eighty-five, <laughs> right? Yes, that this does is, sound all, a bit all like your have Rolling Stones catalog. All he did was have his song. birds sing on all the songs. They had to mute her. They did. They uh, muted her voice. Oh, that's embarrassing. Hey, don't talk. Don't talk about Linda that way. It's not right. Ah, whatever. You know it's true. Hey, I have a question that relates to the last interview that we did. Yeah, at least I knew who my children are. Who is running this interview here? Apparently not me. I don't know. <laughs> Apparently Mick Jagger I'm down is. here. I'm a tiny alien. Please. I know you can't see me, but if, if you could just hear me. That's actually one of the names for my next album. It's uh, called Tiny Aliens. It's, it's quite a good song. Do you think? It is. Do you think it's appropriate for a man to marry a monkey? This is related to our last interview that we did. Uh, and, I did a song called Monkey Man. Right, right, right. And, and so you do believe that's appropriate? Well, what? now, only if I'm a monkey. The song, I say, I'm a monkey man and you're a monkey woman. Right, so they both have to be monkeys. Because we met someone who he, he seemed to invent a whole scientific theory that blurred the lines between a man and a monkey. And, I don't, no, that was Bill Wyman's thing. That wasn't my thing. Oh. He liked to marry very young monkeys. So oh. I quit the band so he could spend time with his, you know, his eighteen-year-old monkey. Goodness, that's Ooh. embarrassing. These are references to actual things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a young bride. I don't know if people are getting my jokes. I, who's been, what are these words? Bride, Wyman. I, I, I don't. I'm having well, a hard even though I know he's a, a member of the band. Bug it off. Oh, right, right. Yeah, see, the band was so terrible that even even the members had to all leave. At least when the Beatles broke up, it was over a girl. The Beatles haven't done haven't played a concert since uh, what 1965 they couldn't hack it we've been playing concerts still we're in our, our 70s we 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 make a new album all the time where's the new hey, beatles album i play i play concerts every year i'm almost 80 years old and i'm still playing concerts one or two with the man. beatles you ain't i just played grand central i did it's quite a show for the trains. Did I say I was 79 years old? <laughs> I hope the trains drowned you out. <laughs> what, what if, okay, the two of you, what if I were to tell you, let me play Barbara Walters here for a second. What if oh, I were. Are you Barbara Walters? Well, She's a friend, actually. I, I'm, do, I'm sure she is, yes. Same, same generation. That's how I met my wife. How do you know? My third <laughs> wife. <laughs> well, my third I, wife, because she came, she's friends with Barbara Walters. She's a cousin. That's how I met her. That's what another straight he hangs out with. What if I were to tell you that we, 
the Meepopians wrote all of your songs. When we, you see, when we visit our space toilets, I, I can't quite explain it, but what happens is we bring all of your Lurfian music into existence. It's hard to explain, but it's true. What if I were to tell you that? What would you say? I'd tell you that. I'd say you're a bit of a daft idiot. Yeah, I'd I have to agree with one, Mick, one, and I don't really think he's... Paul. Daft idiot? What? Who's the, who's the superior form of life here? I sit down with oh, Kate. Say it's I, I write these songs. <laughs> you, well, you think you wrote these songs, but we brought all of that into existence. From Boy, what? Going to dump. the loo? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then I don't come think out that makes much sense. Midnight Rambler. Well, I tell, oh, Midnight Rambler. I was after some some uh, some Thai food in the Nebulon system. You think the magical mystery tool came out of your bum? I don't think that's fair. Well, I don't make it up it's, here. It sounded I'm like just it reporting. Did. Don't shoot the messenger here. Uh, hey, did you just say that? Say what? I did. What happened? Mick. He's a bit of a prick, isn't he? <laughs> okay, what if you hadn't become rock stars? What would you have done with your lives? Any other prospects coming out of school? Well, I was, Ooh, I was thinking studied... of working in the factory. Yeah. Making... You see, he lived up with all the uh, the factory folk. They had nothing going for. I was. I could have been an accountant. Oh. I, was in, I, was, <laughs> I was studying to be an accountant in, in London. I wish you had done that. Might have been a bit more of a prosperous career. Might have contributed a bit more to the world, as it were. Yeah, I could have wrote. I could have wrote. Uh, uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could have wrote all together now. What rubbish! <laughs> well, yeah, it was a song for me. For me, children. It was. You're both. Very... I don't write songs for children. I write songs. That's about because you are a bit of a junkies. child. <laughs> Well, you're both very theatrical. What What about movies? Did you ever think about the movies, acting? I've been in a bunch of movies. I was in... Oh, uh, me too. I've been I in, in Gattaca. <laughs> oh, what? that's quite embarrassing. Now, the, I happened to catch a great movie on my way out here, and I was just wondering, I think it was you, one of your bandmates, Ringo. Did he uh, ever ask you to, either of you, to appear in his 1981 film Caveman? Oh, that was a quite an atrocious monster of a movie. It was. What was it? It's like what? It's like I wanted to be a caveman. I hit my head over over here over myself with a head with a rock. Or hit me head over a hit me head with a rock. As it were. Oh, can't really think. I thought it was just because awful. I think. I thought it was rather entertaining with the dinosaurs. I learned about them and. And then it looked like you were in. Everybody knows the cavemen and the dinosaurs. They didn't live to say they're split up by millions of years. Oh, but not it in wasn't the movie. even historically accurate. Oh. Well, who, who wrote that? Neanderthals group? were not cavemen. Probably written by a Neanderthal. Wait, wait. Is, but Ringo's a great drummer. He is. is this... I have a lot of respect for him as a, as a musician or as an actor. Even in Hard Day's Night, he was a bit. Oh, a bit terrible. All the Beatles All the player themselves. I was in performance. Oh. Well, was Ringo... Who's in performance? Was Ringo playing himself in, in Caveman? I don't think so. Well, he is a bit of a caveman. He may be in the end of the order. I haven't really thought of it. So it wasn't much of a stretch. I think uh, the, your best performance was in the cartoon where they used somebody else's voice. Hey, you take that back. I won't. It's all right. I take that cartoon back. I would I would too. We just didn't really feel like making another movie. We said, hey, why well, can't we just get some somebody else to do our voice? And uh, they said they'd do it. I thought it was pretty convincing. I thought, I, I watched the movie. I just said, I must have been drunk. I don't remember recording this. <laughs> Turns out I was drunk. I don't know if I'm learning anything about the the Lurfy and the hummus beans in this interview. It's just it's hard to follow both of you, especially with the accents. Well, it's been a whole day's night. <laughs> Is that a reference? The I don't know. Did you come out of your toilet paper or the loo? I don't. Well, I can't keep track of everything that comes out of there. Sometimes I don't even pay attention. 
And the next yeah. thing I know, it's a billboard top of the charts. That sounds terrible. But do you get royalties, royalties on this song? I wish. They're doing the copyright, do you? I wish. Sometimes we're I not even know. aware. It's on I wish album. too, but Michael Jackson gets all the funds. He's not even alive. That's a Stevie Wonder song. Not really right? fair. Sorry. Someone else. What is? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie, Stevie Wonder, Stevie now, he's Wonder. talented. He's good. Uh. I did a song with him. It was quite good. He's a very talented man. <laughs> was, was one of your worst. And that's saying a lot. Ebony yeah, and we I were too. quite nice. And Salt and Pepper, we put the whole thing for the Rolling Stones. He didn't really appreciate it. Mm. One of the best band, best albums of all time it was. And we said, welcome the Rolling Stones. Album. You never put welcome the Beatles on any of your albums. I didn't need to. Bit of a prick. Best album of all time until Exile on Main Street came out. The Rolling Stones would exile themselves on Main Street. Scoobity boo boop boop boop. All right. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, that's not even one of your songs, but it sounded pretty good. You don't want to be your beast of burden. <laughs> hey, where do all the lonely people come from? Maybe they're coming from your concert. <laughs> The date ditched him for bringing them to a Paul McCartney concert. Oh. He saw I didn't write, uh, what was that song that paper back said you never play again? Sorry. Uh, yeah, paperback writer, I wrote it while I was on the toilet. Speaking of toilets, it was a toilet back. I was, well, I was thinking, uh, let's write a song. I didn't really have any paper or pen. It's like, oh, I can use my toilet paper. And what did you write? That made me think. <laughs> Paperback writer. It was originally going to be toilet back writer. Oh, I used my own turds. <laughs> I, did. I didn't have a pen, but I it was like, it. this is gold. You know, I think about it. We had a song called Turd on the Run. Now this is starting to make sense. <laughs> Turd on the Run. Oh. Well, oh, no, that song was also about pooping. I'd like to think about it. It really was supposed to be... Man, I'm I've got the runs. Man, that's what was the original. Got the runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that was a... got to scrape the shit right off my shoe. <laughs> wow, the two. Have you well, ever collaborated? To all this. Have you ever collaborated the two of you on a song? Well, we almost did one time. It was a. We were sitting down. We are the world, maybe. We are the world. Sorry in that, I don't even remember. I don't think so. Oh, do I remember all of the 80s I do? <laughs> it's all blur. I, I think, think the guy from Thompson Twins was or something, and Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> oh, and there's a musician. <laughs> so you never do, you both didn't ever collaborate in any way. That's, that's pretty amazing. Well, I guess you can talk about right now. This is quite a... It is a collaborative. Collaborative conversation we're having, isn't it? It's not very congenial. Keith, scoobity boop up, Keith boop played boop with John in uh, the Dirty Mac. What? What's that? It's from the Rock and Roll Circus. Don't you know anything about the Rolling Stones? <laughs> Jeez, I really <laughs> didn't do my homework for this interview. Yeah, I make... I it's quite I embarrassing. It's such a... Uh, you know, you could have looked at, uh, what are they called? Wikipedia? It's got some information. So I would, could have checked it out. I just heard you two were famous, and I was trying to get a sense of, like, is the hummus beans, what, what have they provided the universe? And I'm just leaving more confused than I, than I started out, I think. Well, I've got one word for you. What's that? All we are saying is give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. Give peace a chance, yes. Because it's going good to be a vegetarian. You know, Linda, she was going to start a whole food line of, oh, Linda again. of vegetarian foods she did. What? Oh, that company still exists today. It does 
generates quite a lot of money. What? That's where all my money really comes from, from the vegetarian food. Vegan food? Yeah. What are the ingredients? Vegetables? Yeah, you've got vegetables. Sawdust? You... Oh, you got a little bit of sawdust. <laughs> can't, I can't hurt anybody. Except for the trees. Do you realize no. the deforestation of your planet is 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 uh, spelling doom? D O O M. How about be long gone? That's how you that. spell doom. D O O M. That's a lot easier doom. than spelling deforestation. I'll tell you that. D E F O R E. Yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? I don't know anymore. Oh. Sounds obla de obla dumb. <laughs> have you heard my latest album? Have, have, have you? I have. McCartney 3. What do you think of it? It's got, uh, yeah, I did McCartney 1. Doobie 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 doo. Maybe I was, I was weeping more than that guitar, I'll tell you that. That's George Harrison. If you did your homework, you'd know that. I know that. Oh, nothing to do with that song. Did it make you reference, so uh, it's close enough. <laughs> Who knew that Mick was a bit of a wanker? It really is. <laughs> well, I'm glad we've resolved all of our differences here. I think I need to be getting back to Captain with my report. I think I need to be taking a dump. I've got to uh, maybe write another song. Ah, 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 please. <laughs> it's been a whole you day's night. Stop. And I've been working like a dog, as it were. When I'm home, everything seems to be right. Uh, all right. Well, we don't want the interview then. I think so. Do I get paid? I'm jump into the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we accomplished. <laughs> oh, wrong. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you later, Mick, Sir McCartney. Very nice. Oh, boy. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> Am I me too late? Oh, Thien, you, you just missed it. I Mitch, just went back. Me, me have very important news to tell everybody here. What? Me, six people. <laughs> me, most people do not know that, but me. Actually, six I don't two. think so, Thind. I think you're just yes. trying to work yes, yes, your yes. way in. I the... played on many, many songs. No credits give to me. What did everybody think? Ringo? No, 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 no. It was Thind. Oh, Thind. What did you play again? I played drums. <laughs> you, pl you played the drums. Very, very good tempo. I, do. I think that would have been noticed if you played the drums. Just now, look. We, that, that was 50. 58 milliseconds that just passed. Perfect rhythm. <laughs> it's quite a sense of time you've got there. That was three and a half seconds. <laughs> I can do this all day. Me and Ringo have best tempo all right. in the world. So give me 120 beats per minute right now. Go. <laughs> wow, that is... <laughs> that checks out. See, be good. Be very good. I6 Beetle. <laughs> Where Paul? Where's Sir Paul? He corroborate my story. I think I left him. Sir Paul. <laughs> Sir Paul. Where he go? Did, did I? Did I? Did I miss interview? <laughs> I think you did. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! I never get credit. Da. Anyway. We think this end of episode. <laughs> and now she's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Now she's a pretty nice girl. Changes from day to day. You ready to cut me off? Want to tell her I love her a lot, but I just realized I'm gonna make a mind. <laughs> what? Another reference that's, I'm not getting. That's the end of the episode. <laughs>